I know that a lot of us Muslims we believe that it was a it was a journey in a dream, and some believe that it was a physical journey. Well, no, so, most of so the. So, what do we have to actually believe? Yeah, it's a good question. To uh, understand al -Kahf. most of the people do believe uh, because they read uh, that uh, it's a physical journey. Prophet is talking about. Otherwise, Prophet saw many things in the dream. Mm -hmm. He saw Ibrahim al-Islam's dream. He saw, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the hell and heaven in, in his dream. And he saw, uh, you know, there's so many dreams I can only want to go through. Most of the pe Muslims know about so many dreams of the Prophet yeah. uh, If this was also a dream, then the Arabs wouldn't have a problem. Yeah. You know, Miraj became a very big bone of contention between Muslim believers and non-believers. Yeah. And so much so that they started making fun of uh, the Prophet that and, and all the Sahaba that, you know, now your Prophet has come yeah. up with this yeah, yeah. this travel. You you actually believe that? So if it were a dream at any level, yeah. even a weak hadith wouldn't have uh, been there. Yeah, and besides, if someone sees anything in the dream, no one's going to come and question you. Oh, did you have this dream? Because everyone knows that everything is possible in the dream. Yeah, that's why. This so what even, was a big thing for the them to come Even the weak hadith of Miraj, uh, the problems of... Uh, uh, the Sahabas, yeah. that wouldn't have been here. If Sahabas at any level thought this was a dream, dream yeah. it would not have been a problem at any yeah. level. But it is such a, uh, an array of uh, hadith and uh, uh, you know the the problems Arab were giving to the the Sahabis that you know. Uh, now I'm just talking to those people who think that those hadith are zayif. There's so many hadith which are zayif only on a dream. It literally is a paradox. Yeah. If it, you believe it's a dream, then there shouldn't be any hadith. Forget Raif hadith. Yeah. Because it, nobody bothers about a dream. Everybody, I fly in a dream. Yeah. I've seen the yeah, sun and moon yeah. in a dream. I literally have. So, yeah. I have, nobody's going to think that they're going to ask my brother that, you know, what you actually believe Sahil who had a dream that he had standing on sun, you yeah. know, or yeah. the moon yeah. or, or whatever. So it's, it's wow. That's a very important point, actually. Yeah, it's, For the it's a game believe changer. that it was a, a journey in a dream. Yeah, then very, there would not have been point. any text about. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know those yeah. problems Sahaba were yeah. going through, and the Prophet Islam was going through of uh, whether uh, he's telling the truth or not. Yeah, so, because no one's going to ask you about a dream. Yeah, let alone uh, ask your friends. Yeah. Oh, why exactly. are you talking about this, man? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did your friend really had a dream? Yeah. yeah. So it's it's a problem, and the Prophet because uh, there's so many hadith uh, hadith about this of when they asked the Prophet told about that caravan coming in, and when is that caravan going to reach Medina? Uh, yeah. The Prophet talked about Battle Mak Mukaddas at that time, and, yeah. Yeah. and he was shown the whole uh, masjid and you know the whole structure in yeah. front of him, uh, and so on. And Abu Bakr Siddiq got getting the title of Abu Bakr Siddiq. Where else do you think? Uh, People who think Miraj was a dream, why are you calling him Abu Bakr Siddiq? Just yeah. calling Abu Bakr? Because yeah. that's how he got, we know him. We know him as Siddiq because of the Miraj physical uh, testimony of the Prophet Islam journey. Uh, otherwise, uh, whoever believes he's a, uh, the Prophet Islam saw it in a dream, in this, this first Khalifa is called Abu Bakr only. Okay? Wow. Because uh, Siddiq is the word given. Otherwise, yeah. what do you think? Why was he called Siddiq? That's a question. A burden of proof is on you then. And there's so many things about uh, why Miraj is uh, a physical journey. Wow. I mean, it's everywhere. I mean, you know, so... Uh, uh, that's a very strong, logical argument. Uh, wow. Yeah, so uh, plus the word Roya, uh, which they think is a, the word of the dream, is a very recent entry in the uh, Muslim psychology that Roya in Bani Israel is the, is the dream. Mm -hmm. Even the roya in Arabic means to see. You know what I'm saying? When we say roya, yeah, yeah. yeah roya te halal does not see the moon in the dream. They see it, you know. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's uh, it's uh, it's, yeah. it's the same word. I don't know why just roya has to be a dream only. <laughs> uh, they just maybe they just don't know Arabic that much, or maybe they're too biased about whatever scholar came up with his own dream of uh, putting this as a dream. Yeah. Or maybe they just can't make sense of this. A physical journey, so uh, they, no. They try to find other ways. Somehow, to I've it. seen a common pattern that people who think Prophet <laughs> had a dream uh, in the Mirage, somehow they are very pro science. Somehow, it's just a weird anomaly. People who actually believe in science, 
Yeah, they somehow they, just double back yeah. and all of a sudden refute and, and you know, it's like, what, what's, what's wrong with you? You're the, only, the first person I expect yeah. this to, to be, you know, yeah. rationally placed. But since science does not really explain an, an actual man traveling like that, especially not without yeah, a jet. Yeah, yeah. So science, maybe that's yeah. why they're too biased about science. And they're, uh, they think that uh, human, Muslims, human, I don't know why I just keep on calling them human. Then Muslim psychology <laughs> is... Uh, why Muslims are not humans? <laughs> well, I'm just saying, you know, uh, Muslims are naturally humans. Uh, so these people think that to be superstitious and become, we came up with this stuff, then we'll have to come, I mean, you'll have to prove a lot of things out of our, 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 your own system as well. Yeah, that's actually kind of very weird that uh, mirage doesn't make sense to us, but time travel, all the theories, yeah, yeah. which are not even facts yet. Hey, uh, further proof of why uh, Surah Bani Israel is such an important surah. Uh, because uh, a new dispute has come up with, uh, it's just, you know, I, I mean, uh, most people don't dispute it, so don't worry about it, but people who are going to go through more uh, you know, in time, they're going to follow a bigger population of those dream believers. Yeah. Uh, we'll call them uh, dreamers for now. Yeah, so okay. The dreamer Muslims and the physical m movers. You time know, travelers. The time travelers, yeah. The yeah. time travelers and the dreamers. These people are going to grow in population and this is going to become a little bit of a bone of a contention later on. Let's just say, you know, two, three, maybe four generations from now. So this is another start of a fitan coming in right now inside our own ranks. So uh, thank God the Jal the is not a Muslim because uh, I can name a few who started this dream theory. You know, this is the first deception. Uh, so, uh, but this is not going to be Muslim. So uh, the, the real question is why, why do we want this to be a dream? I mean, that's the real question. Mm. That what do we want to gain out of? putting this as a dream because I know what I gain out of it when I put this as a time travel mm -hmm. because it sets the psychology of Surah Kaf very, very straight up right there okay. and it gives us strength and that uh, the Prophet ﷺ did go through Mehraj as a physical journey and uh, I, I know a scholar who actually quoted to me directly a hadith that uh, Prophet ﷺ said I was between the state of sleeping and being awake and when I saw two people coming in, I uh, felt two people standing on my shoulders because he was okay. on the floor. Mm -hmm. And they were standing up and then uh, one was Jibreel and one was his companion. And then the start, the, the journey starts with the dialogue and you know, who is the third person with us, the, the third person, the second person is this is Muhammad, uh, the Prophet. And then they introduce each other and then they start walking towards Kaaba and then the Isra started. And this is what, you know, what, what the Hadith they use as uh, to build up their case that this was a dream because he was in the state of not sleeping, not of being awake. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> if it said sleeping, that then yeah, you have a case. We'll yeah. talk about the, the health of the hadith then. Yeah. But it doesn't even say it's sleeping. Yeah. You know? I deny sleeping. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you'll have to really, really come up with something better uh, because the rest of the whole Arabs didn't think that he was asleep. Uh, the Sahabas didn't think he was asleep. He had to give proofs of how uh, how physical it was. Uh, yeah, I guess he was even asked questions regarding. Well, you to can describe ask, everything. Well, like, in, in, in their defense, the dreamers' defense, hmm. you can still ask a prophet if he was dreaming yeah, because he yeah. claimed to be a. But 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 then there was like a, a caravan passing by at the same time. No, when but he traveled. Let's just say I'm a, I'm a, a guy who believes that uh, this happened in the dream. Mm -hmm. Then I can still ask you this question because you claim to be a prophet. Yeah. So, you know, tell us because your dream yeah, is yeah. supposed to be true dreams. A weaker argument, yeah. Yeah. So, but, but still, uh, since Arabs ridiculed the Prophet yeah. and Abu Bakr Siddiq, uh, you know, testified. Yeah. Uh, so, this actually goes to show really clearly that Arabs did, did not, were not told that this was a dream. Okay, so we're moving to Surah Kahf now. Yeah, so, let's just uh, from yeah. Bani Isra, Surah Isra al Miraj, we believe that it was a physical. No, we're not moving to Surah Kahf. Uh, we're, we're, we're actually going to stay on Surah Bani, Bani Israel Surah, because yeah. there's so many things, I, and I'm uh, going to drag. You, you started the time travel, yeah. That's yeah, Surah it's not Isra al Miraj. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Sahil, I'm sorry to interrupt you here. Uh, there's a story about a caravan which yeah. Rasulullah saw during his journey to Jerusalem from Makkah. Uh, because um, 
even if it's a dream that cannot be such a there cannot be such a huge coincidence that he speaks to someone in the caravan in a dream then he comes back can you, can you please explain that whole story yeah that's a very very good point because uh, it actually has two deep meanings this story one is uh, that the psychology of isra is a totally different psychology that we have as muslims okay. we think it was a road journey even though it was not a road journey because this story tells that uh, that man well let me tell you what the story yeah, yeah. is can you please tell the whole story yeah. the arabs <clears throat> asked the prophet sallam that if you are so true give us some um, proofs and the prophet sallam that there, there, there's a caravan that is coming in mm-hmm. and it's going to reach that certain day in on a certain date and a certain time and it did reach that because the prophet sallam saw how far that was mm-hmm. and not just that during his journey he saw that there was a man inside that caravan who had lost his uh, camel and the uh, prophet sallam was looking from above so he knew where the camel was so he actually told that guy okay that this is where you should look okay like he and called him out yeah he sky? called him out yeah and then uh, we know he called him up from uh, from from the sky because that man said that yes i i heard muhammad's voice from from above so isra was also in the air okay. this is the other meaning is that was not a a a a, a land to land journey yeah. okay uh so the other uh, uh uh thing about this uh, isra was the prophet sallam said that i saw my brother musa's grave when he was praying in <clears> his <throat> grave and i know where that grave is uh yeah. during that that journey of isra yeah. this did not happen in the in miraj miraj is a vertical ascent up up to the heavens yeah so all of these things happened further But you can see someone praying in the grave in the dream because right now we're discussing if yeah, it's yeah, a dream yeah i'm just saying uh, but the uh, caravan uh, thing and the guy he actually did come no no wh- why i said about this uh, this uh, musa's uh, account is so that i can tell you that this was not a road journey okay it was a journey in the air okay and uh, this further proves time travel because um uh, this this journey is about 1200 kilometers aerial distance Okay. So uh you know this cannot be done in in a matter of a second. Yeah. Or or however long it did to took. Uh so uh when the Arabs asked for the proofs, he this man came the caravan came at the right point and the right time and the right day. And this man was asked and he said, "Yes, I did lose my camel and I did hear uh the prophet sallam's voice." Wow. Okay, and so, uh, so they cannot be in a dream because you cannot be just uh, saying anything in the dream and uh, if i see you in my dream and i tell you to do something you're not just going to come to my yeah, yeah. home next day and say yeah I, you know i heard you yeah, say that yeah. so uh, again you know that's that's a secondary proof the primary proof itself is arabs asking for the proof yeah you know what i'm saying whatever he gave as <clears throat> proof is uh, secondary in this argument okay so uh, again for people who really are looking into uh, this sort of uh, uh, confusion this literally nails it that this is not a a, a journey in the dream okay so from bani israel what we have to learn is the time travel yes before uh, yeah. we move on to surah al kahf and uh, not just the time travel but the technology okay of time travel okay because these are two different sorts of technologies that were used okay can uh, you please explain uh, the isra was done do you mean by technology technology it's a, it's a technical it's like term a mythical story uh, no no Muslims, it's, it's not i'll tell you why but we just believe it because we're muslims uh, yeah we well we just don't well i don't want to use the word just because that just lowers the psychology we just believe it means yeah, that's that, how uh, we most of the muslims do actually uh, no, well i'll tell you that's why we can never justify it we can never argue about it we just say yeah it's a matter of our faith he did travel and Yeah but it shouldn't be said in an inferior psychological way. Yeah. It should be a very superior thing. Mm-hmm. Because Newton didn't say, "Hey, you know what? I just believe that this gravity." You know, he said it is gravity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah, the, but that's very unfortunate that that's the level of Yeah, of that's exactly why I'm have. saying Surah Bani Israil is so important because that's yeah. the Newtonian belief that we have to put in time travel. Okay. Einsteinian belief that we we have to put inside time travel. Mm-hmm. Way more than him actually. He was theorizing yeah. it. We actually have proof. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. we just we don't just believe it. We actually believe that this is the only thing which is true. Uh when a scientist says, "Hey, you know what? Einstein is proven wrong." We don't care. 
we don't believe it because einstein said it we believe because mohammed bin abdullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it yeah and we 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 know that you know uh, if we yeah. believe at that level you know we might just may have a shot at you know being those uh, of the siddiqins so it means we do have a real man who had we, who experienced time travel not so just for other people but other people time travel but oh, really? we'll, we'll come to surah kaf later okay but uh, yeah, this is really where uh, this is where the mm-hmm. uh, the psychology has to be constructed and this is why i said there's no chances or or, or coincidences in quran mm-hmm. the concept of time travel concept of angels taking prophet sallam uh in a linear direction from kaaba to uh betul laham where uh, you know uh the dome of the rock yeah where uh, the <coughs> ascension did take place this is something which is surah bani israil it's not surah kaf hmm. so when we understand this and then we go to surah kaf then we come to surah kaf really well prepared as to how to look at surah kaf all, all together in different chapters you see that unless you know what all of this is all about you won't be able to put asabe kaf's uh, uh time travel and zulkarnain's journey because zulkarnain travels through the isra that 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 you know this 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 uh this first part of miraj is which is isra okay so uh because miraj is a keyword which is in the quran and the uh the the travel of the angels through certain pathways is called uh, uh, miraj or maharij in plural so uh, even the the time uh, lapse and the time difference is also told by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in uh, in uh, surah maharij as to how angels travel about in the universe and uh, how their one day equals to x amount of years in in our planet so maharij and miraj is a totally different concept this is why bani israil maharij hmm. maharij is the plural of ma- ma- miraj okay uh, miraj means ascension and yeah. maharij means ascensions the, the ways of ascension okay ways of like you can say portals yeah literally portals these are different okay. portals or used by the angels as per uh surah maharij that's so, the name of a surah wow so we have a surah in the quran yeah, which talks surah. about ways of ascension yeah portals or uh, for angels okay yeah mm-hmm. and even the time differential is given in that surah <coughs> okay the the time which is taken yeah. by an angel is a day at that portal is like is 50000 years of, on of, the of, on this planet on this planet yeah so this this is something which is uh, a a very clear psychological uh, construction of a muslim uh, mind as to how we you know all of this universe is you know coming about and how things are going and since surah bani israil talks about two different types of travels okay. so we can't just say oh it's a miraj so maharaj no it's not isra is also there okay so there's another way okay to 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 travel uh other than the the you know those so there's a way portal. there's a portal to traverse the earth and yeah. then there's a way to exit the earth yeah, yeah. okay That's so, so there's two kinds of traveling that has two kinds kind of, of ways ways yeah. that yeah. is also okay So once we have that in order when we can actually understand uh, what kind of choice of words Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala used in surah kaf okay. because he uses certain words <laughs> and uh, those certain words are used uh, all over the Quran we just somehow uh, you know don't use the meaning of those words in surah kaf somehow and this mm. is a problem that we need to solve and this is why i said bani israil actually is is a very key element of surah kaf displacement its concept and uh, the 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 types of uh, uh, you know journey and the uh, time lapse and you know so on and so forth mm-hmm. it actually creates that uh, um, clarity for a muslim mind that you know this is how it works so now let's uh, see what uh, surah kaf is all about so yeah. that you know we can uh, yeah. uh, understand that but again you know iman is 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 Im- imperative here Im- iman is critical Uh, if we have that iman in the quran and we do not validate quran through science then yeah we're good but if we validate quran through science then we we we've lost the battle to begin with even before the battle because now we're looking for science because time travel concept as soon as i say time travel you're going to think einstein you're not going to think yeah. muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam yeah you know you're not going to think surah bani israil no that's yeah. that's not how we think because but nowadays when you talk talk about time travel it's the interstellar that i think about yeah yeah, yeah. so why 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 are we looking at uh, any kind of spaceship 
Yeah. Uh, why did not we think uh, in, when somebody said interstellar? We didn't. We, why didn't we think white horse? Yeah. You know, because that's the first interstellar that we actually found out. Yeah. Actually, you know, we found that out through other uh, prophets as well. But we we're talking about the calf right now. Mm -hmm. So the real question is, where do we settle the iman on all of these things, and what is the definition of iman? Mm -hmm. Once we have that, and we can only know that through the iman of Sahaba, because prophets. Is, and all the other prophets, um, you know, they, they have a totally different matrix of what Iman is. Yeah. So and what was the psychology of Sahaba regarding all these things? The Sahaba psychology was... Like how are we so different than them? Where do we lose the track? We have them and, and we have a lot of uh, opinions of 1400 years of uh, different European and Arabian and, you know, other scholars. And even before that, we predate our, our psychology, St. Yeah. Augustine and uh, yeah. Aristotle and, and so on and so forth. So the thought process actually, you know, is inherited through a lot of clutter of a lot of people's differential of opinion. And then we get, you know, we get lost in the middle, yeah. even though it would have been a very, it should have been a very linear uh, track from the Sahabi to, to the current yeah. Muslim. Yeah. And we were not told those stories and whoever tells those stories, uh, we have a lot of other people who are calling that superstition, even the Muslim ranks. Yeah. Or, you know, your people flew. Or your 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 sahabis were you know doing this and that and you all of a sudden Hazrat Umar had a karama and Hazrat yeah. Abu Bakr had a karama Hazrat Ali had a karama oh my God where is the proof all of these are weak hadith that's not the point even if they are weak hadith it doesn't really matter I'm talking about the psychology of of of, of this <coughs> technology and iman on this technology in this sahaba had and uh, this is the definition of iman as 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 much as uh, our uh, a Darwinian student believes in evolution, we should have a 10 million time more belief in, in, in uh, the, the, the way time travel is done uh, and, and shown. Mm -hmm. uh, a regular human being in the planet actually has started to believe Iman in Dar Darwinian evolution. Even yeah. some scholars of Muslim, uh, Islam say that, yes, yeah, at some level evolution is there in terms of animals and not human beings. I don't know why they're confusing anybody. A horse was a horse when he was born a horse. You yeah. know, a monkey was a monkey. And there's no evolution like that. Uh, and even if there is some sort of evolution, it is on a cert, such a subcellular level that is, is insignificant. Because uh, the it's a metaphysical concept. I'm not going to go in that detail. But yeah, I think that's not the yeah. topic evolution here. But Iman in, uh, in uh, uh, time travel, uh, should be uh, should be at the level of Abu Bakr Siddiq, mm -hmm. nothing less. And even if Abu Bakr Siddiq did not, if he did not have that sort of iman, just I'm just saying for the sake of your understanding here, we shouldn't be relying on Abu Bakr Siddiq's testimony. We yeah. should be relying on Nabi Baksasalam's testimony. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. All of a sudden, yeah. we think that since Abu Bakr Siddiq said, said it, it, so it's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it doesn't matter whether Abu Bakr Siddiq. That was for his own good that he's, he, 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 you know, yeah. he believed. Yeah. Uh, we should believe as, as you know, Sahil Adim directly believing the Prophet Sallallahu testimony. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't hmm. need a, a, a witness. Hmm. That's against the spirit of Islam. We are not a Muslim if you believe in Miraj because Abu Bakr Siddiq said so. It's, you know, a guy comes to uh, Umar in Khattab, I don't know, and he says, uh, I need you to uh, double check a case. Uh, the, uh, I just, you know, was uh, not satisfied with the verdict. And Umar ibn Khattab said, who, ha who handled your case? And he said, uh, your prophet handled my case. And Umar ibn Khattab slaughtered him right there. No. Did you coming to me hmm. to actually object and critically evaluate the, uh, the decision of the prophet? Yeah, I heard from someone that it's a daif hadith. I don't care if it's a daif hadith. Yeah. What I'm saying is psychology. I'm yeah. using daif or uh, as an id, uh, hadith in, 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 a, in, a, in a same psychological flavor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He better have killed that guy. That's what I, I want. <laughs> okay. You know, because if a Muslim claims to be Muslim, he's critically evaluating Prophet Islam, then I don't know what kind of uh, definition of religion, forget Islam, you can critically evaluate Abu Bakr Siddiq and everybody else in the world. But you cannot critically evaluate the Prophet ﷺ if we know that this is coming straight from the Prophet. ﷺ. Yeah, I think there are more stories of Sahaba. Uh, yeah, I will tell of you. This kind of psychology. Yeah, but yeah. what I'm saying is 
this is the finest example that I can think of. If it were not a day, if it was a day for these, which of course it is, I think this is the best hadith for knowing how Iman should be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let's just say, forget about this. Uh, <coughs> these are two sahabis. My father says something and my neighbor comes in and he says, you know what? Your father is not a right man. I should be doing everything I can, <laughs> you know, which, which I do. And yeah. How dare you say think this or that about my father? Because yeah. I have that Iman in my father. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not just uh, an emotional concept. Yeah. It is a very rational concept as well. Otherwise, yeah. my family structure is going to break. Yeah. If I start critically evaluating everything my father is doing. Yeah. An you know argument can be given here that what if your father really is wrong? Yeah. But we can't give that argument regarding Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No, no. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about Prophet here. I'm hmm. talking about the psychology of Iman here. Hmm. Okay. The psychology of Iman has to be really, really crisp. Hmm. It is not something which is to be taken lightly. If the Prophet is saying something, it is way more real than gravity. If I fall down, I'm going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is something which, uh, let me tell you a little story so that you can understand. Because this is a real story. That the Prophet was coming into a caravan in which uh, he was, uh, he looked at a horse which he really liked and he wanted to buy that horse. But he did not have the money at that time. He said, I'm going to pay you when we, we reach home, which is Medina. So they made a deal and uh, the deal was done. Okay, deal is closed. The horse is yours as soon as you pay me up. But as soon as the caravan hit Medina, everybody came looking for that horse. Look, look at this horse. And everybody, you know, wanted to uh, pay big money for it. As soon as he got more money uh, offer, he all of a sudden backed out from the deal. The process said, why are you backing off the deal? Man? We just had a deal. And he said, do you have any witness for this? So this is the Sabi, uh, Suhaib, he was just walking by, he's a local in Medina. The person says, so hey, come here, and I want you to uh, bear witness to the, to the deal we had. And this guy, he said, well, how can you be bear bearing witness to, to something which you didn't see? Yeah. So, so Suhaib said, uh, you're talking about a horse here, buddy? I actually bear witness to heaven, I haven't seen heaven. <laughs> You know? Wow. So uh, I do bear witness that this deal happened and I, 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 I Subhanallah. You, you have to, uh, uh, you know, honor this deal. So this is the Iman. This is the actual flavor of the Iman. This is why I said this, these are the, these are the construction of psychology that, that the Sahabas had. Subhanallah. This is something which is so imperative for a Muslim to know. And this is why I said, if you do not know Bani Israel, Surah Bani Israel's uh, psychology, yeah. And you'll be falling flat on your face in Surah Kaf, thinking, Why, there's nothing about Dajjal in here. How is this, this Surah going to save me from Dajjal? Dajjal is a, 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 an animal. A, a, we have to kill that animal through a weapon. We need to believe in that weapon, that this weapon is going to kill Dajjal. The weapon is Surah Kaf. Yeah, and that weapon is Surah Kaf. But if my belief in Surah Kaf is made in Surah Bani Sai, this is how these three surahs come in together and, you know, make up a bullet which is going to shoot uh, the jal down. So this is something which is so important to, to understand that uh, Bani Israel comes up with the time travel concept and the trajectory and the journeys and the ways yeah. and the ascensions and the, the whole, uh, you know, nine yards or whatever happened. And then we enter Surah Kaf and then you'll like if you have the total Iman on, 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 on how you know, these ways come about and how, how these journeys happen. And then when we enter Surah Kaf, all of a sudden, things fall way easier in the right places than, than, uh, than, than you know, if you just start Surah Kaf cold. Hmm. Okay, SubhanAllah. So, it's about the first uh, 10 uh, verses of the Surah Kaf. Okay. Surah uh, Kaf actually starts, uh, let's just start with the name now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, technically speaking, this surah should have been called Zulkarnain. That's okay. the, you know. You're making a big the, claim. Yeah. Well, should no, be. I'm just giving you a pattern of the Quran. Okay. Any subject that is discussed the most mm -hmm. is determined as the, as mm -hmm. the you know, mm -hmm. as the title. Surah Luqman is by Surah so Luqman's, you know, accounts and everything. And so on and so forth. You, you, okay. Zulkarnain is discussed in such great detail mm -hmm. that he... Technically, it wouldn't have been such a big surprise if we call it Surah Zulkarnain. Okay. Mm -hmm. But there's a reason why Surah Kaf is Surah Kaf. Mm -hmm. 
You have to understand that. And Surah Bani Israel is building up that concept. Okay. Because there's some 